It's a bittersweet day today. Today's the day the Mercedes S65, she goes off to her new owner, all the way down to Georgia. She's gonna resume her life down there. But today's my last opportunity to do a cold start. That growl, that rumble, that pop from the exhaust. My last chance, so uh, just get it going, I guess. Tell you what, these cars are stunning. It's beautiful, it's gorgeous. It's a sexy sedan and it's true. And I didn't even know these cars existed up until just a few years ago. You see, I was originally looking for a Mercedes E55, you know, uh, the supercharged V8, somewhere around 03, 04, 05. And they ran somewhere around 12 to $14,000 for a nice one without a ton of miles. Uh, after checking it out, I wanted something a little bigger. I got a family of six and it'd be nice to have three of the kids with me and my wife. I needed something larger, S-Class, and that's when I, turned my sights onto an S63, right? The, with the twin turbo V8, it was a full size car. Uh, it just would fit me better. And they were just for a little bit more money than the an E55. And then I discovered these, an S65. I didn't even know these were on the planet until I started doing more research. And I found, again, just for a little bit more money, you could get the top dog, the king of the hill, the S65. And $25,000 bought me this car one year ago. All right, let's take a look. It's incredible to me how affordable these cars are for what you get and for $25,000 it's an amazing value, an amazing bargain. However, it comes at a price and that's something I sort of knew going into this when I bought this car. Now I really didn't expect to have to put a lot into it. I didn't have a long term ownership plan for this. It was only a year I was hoping to break even or come very close to it at least. And it's ironic what I'm selling this car for is 500 less than what I bought it for. However, the cost of upkeep, the cost of maintenance and repairs to this thing is astronomical. In fact, I had to write a list and write it all down of what I spent on this car in my one year time of owning this. And the very first thing I did with this car was I, after getting it home, it needed a battery. I put a battery in, it was $115. But after that, it was an ECU. I had to pull the ECU out from under the hood. I sent it out to Eurocharge for a couple reasons. First is I had a check engine light on, which diagnosed as the catalytic converter. So I pulled that ECU out, sent it to Eurocharge, first for them to make sure that this is a Eurocharged car, meaning that it got an electronic tune that added an extra 100 horsepower. Uh, but also I wanted to see if they could turn off those, those um, check engine light codes. And they did, they were able to turn off code 420 and 430 However, there's two more catalytic converter codes, 422, 432, that they were not able to pull and take off, which meant I was obligated, I was required to add catalytic converters to this car. This car came with straight pipes in the downpipe section, um, which is fine in other states, but not in Delaware. I couldn't pass inspection. I had to spend $1,127 yep, to add high-performance catalytic converters, something like 800 cell cats or something like that, whatever it was, it was, um, it worked and it fixed the check engine light, got me through inspection and, uh, and it was good to go for a while. A couple months after that, an oil change. And this car isn't just any oil change. You just don't go to Jiffy Lube with this thing. It takes a certain type of oil and it takes an incredible nine and a half quarts of oil to do a basic oil change. Now it goes up to 11.1 .1 quarts if you're dumping the oil out of the oil cooler as well. All told, 200 bucks. Oil, filter, plug, outrageous. It's not what I expected. Um, in this past spring, I noticed the cooling fan would not turn off. It was running on high constantly, even without the air conditioning on, even without the temp on the engine creeping up, it was running on high. It didn't click in my head uh, until later, until the temperature started warming up and uh, I saw that the temp gauge started creeping up and so I diagnosed it as a thermostat, needed a new thermostat, not a big deal. Well, it is for this car, $385 for a thermostat, for a factory Mercedes thermostat, $385. Stupid, stupid, stupid money. And of course, with that is three gallons of coolant at a $18 a gallon. Um, but that did not fix the overheating problem. Now the temperature was creeping up, it didn't go into a full overheat mode. Um, but it was enough to worry me and concern me. I took it in to get diagnosed, $95 for a diagnosis. 
and it came back as the cooling fan. The cooling fan took a crap. And that's what I was talking about when the cooling fan was running on high when it was still cold out. Uh, that should have dawned on me. Should have clicked in my head. It did not. And that cooling fan, $283, which is actually more affordable than I thought it would be, frankly. Uh, so I was pleased with that. And that took care of the cooling and the heating problems with this car. But that wasn't the end of it. You see, it also needed brakes. And this is where I got kicked in the head on prices. See, I knew this was an exclusive car and I knew things were gonna be expensive. I didn't understand that only 477 of these cars were made in 2007. And that was a lot. That was like almost a high watermark on S65 production. And when you get so limited on production numbers, parts are more scarce, parts are more special. And the cost of pads and rotors for this car, you ready? $2,934. Outrageous. But that's what you got to do with these cars. And those brakes, they're not lasting 50,000 miles. However, I did go to FCP Euro and they have a deal where once you buy it, um, you get a free lifetime replacement warranty, which is pretty cool for as long as I own the car anyway. Uh, doesn't mean anything. Doesn't mean anything to the new owner. But grand total, everything I spent on this car in the one year that I've had it. Now, Remember, I paid $25,000 for it, and $25,000 included the Euro charge, included wheels and tires. Uh, I spent an additional $5,276 keeping this car up. My grand total, everything invested, $30,726 for a incredible loss of $5,776 on this car. So look, it's about time. About time we get going, we're gonna run this car over to Jeffrey. He's the gentleman who just bought this car. He drove up from Georgia yesterday. He uh, stayed overnight at a hotel near here. He did a one-way rental. We're gonna run this car over to him. Um, I'm anxious to see what his plans are for the car. He actually has a YouTube channel that's been dormant for a while and his intentions is to restart that YouTube channel using this car as a key point of content. So I'm anxious to see this car continue on and continue the story with this car. I'm anxious to see what he does and his plan for this car. So uh, let's take a drive, we'll get over there, and uh, let's go meet Jeffrey. This car is so amazing, so incredible, but I never got to reach its full potential. You had all these plans when I bought this car a year ago, and the virus was a big part of all those plans blowing up. I, it, I got nothing out of this. This thing is meant to be on the highway going fast, long distance, road trips and tours. And I had plans to do that with my wife, uh, but the virus just shut everything down and shut down the plan for this car too. So instead all my driving with this car has been just around town. I was taking the kids to school and, and going out to dinner and stuff when we could back in the time when, when we were allowed to do that. But anymore, the car just sits and it sits in the garage and that's an irritating point for me. This car is so clean and so nice. This thing just sat in the garage more than it was driven. And it really bothered me. I spent $25,000 plus another 57 or $5,300 uh, keeping this car up and I got no use out of it, no value, no appreciation of it other than just being a garage piece. And, and that's not what I'm about. And it's something that really drove me nuts with this car. It's a lesson that I thought I had learned previously when I had a 58 Dodge Coronet. I had restored that car. I spent 15 years going through that car, every nut and bolt. The thing was showroom new when I was done with it. And when I was done, it sat in the garage. I hated driving it. I hated getting it dirty. I hated the kids getting in with dirty shoes and sticky fingers. I hated how much effort it took to clean it up and polish the chrome every time I went out. And I thought I was past that. I thought I was through that when I when I made the decision to buy this car, but clearly I'm not. This car does not fit my lifestyle, does not fit the way I like to drive cars, leave mountain rain, get dirty in them, doesn't matter. That's my style. This car doesn't match that. Now, when I went shopping for this car last year, I went to bring a trailer and I used their prices and their auctions as a benchmark on what the right price would be to buy these cars. Now, you can find these cars cheap on the wholesale market, 18, 19, maybe $20,000, but you have no idea what you're getting. You don't know what the service history is. You don't know if the brakes are good, coil packs have been replaced. You have no background, no history whatsoever. So I decided to spend a little bit more money, the 25,000 to make sure I got a good car. And again, I used bring a trailer. And at the time, $25,000 was the right price for this car given the 92,000 miles that it has or 89 when I bought it. 
And so I went back to bring a trailer to figure out what the right price is when trying to sell this car. And I came up with an average selling price of cars on that website, $22,250 or so. Uh, bring a trailer also charges a 10% buyer's fee. So basically you're at 24.5. And that's exactly what I was asking for and what I was wanting to get for this car. And, uh, and that's what it sold for. Now I think, I think it's close to the end of the depreciating. I can't imagine these cars getting much cheaper than, than low twenties really for a good sorted, good running, well figured out car with, you know, good brakes and coil packs and, and hydraulic suspension and all the pieces that make up a great car. I, you know, I think it might be at the end of the depreciation cycle or very, very close to it. And so I think Jeffrey or any new owner of these cars, as long as you get a good one, you make good choices and good decisions on the car that you pick, I, I think you're going to end up with a really good car that's going to hold its value or maybe even start increasing in value shortly too. But despite all the costs that it takes to keep this car on the road, everything I put into it, the one big surprise that I got out of this was how inexpensive insurance is. I started off with, with putting it under Geico, which is my regular policy, $1,500 for the year. Not a ton of money. Uh, my other cars are about $1,000 a year. So this is you know 50% more, but for what you're getting, I mean, it's an incredible car for $1,500 in insurance. I took a chance and I called Haggerty, who covers my antique cars, shared this with them, and they have a, a specialty policy for cars like this and Ferraris and, and you know, really high-end cars. They quoted me, and I switched policies over to them just for this car, $500 for the year, zero deductible, $300,000, $100,000 on policy limits. Incredible, $500 in insurance for this, sorry. Now, they also put some restrictions on there, like, you know, who can drive it? I can drive it, my wife can drive it, my son can't, other people can't. This is limited just to me and my wife. All right, we made it to the hotel that he's staying at. Why don't we see if we can go in and find him? <laughs> How you doing, man? Finally <laughs> Nice to see you. Lies. I Lies. got that same shirt. Oh, well, yeah? Mine says DMC Oh, on yeah, it. okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Yeah, I thought I'd mix it up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, that's great. What do you think? I love it. She's so pretty. Right. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Even better in person. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, pictures does not do it justice. All right, we are done here. 24-5 in my pocket. Jeffrey's having a blast. This is exactly what he expected. No surprises. That's my goal when I saw these cars. He loves it. He said he's going to spend probably an hour or two out here just going through it all, getting his phone synced, understanding it, really just absorbing it. I'm thrilled for him. I'm thrilled to sell the car. I'm thrilled to be able to move on. And this is the end of my journey. This is the beginning of a new journey for him. And uh, I know he's going to do some cool stuff. And I can't wait to follow him, see what he's got up his sleeve. He's got some plans that he shared already. Can't wait to check it all out. So thank you for following. Thank you for being here. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the storage with this car and I'll see you on the next video.